Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Alice in Wardland by Draw Lab Entertainment. And in this game, you are attempting to say words based on categories using the characters from the famous Alice in Wonderland. You are going to receive categories and forbidden letters, and on your turn you are going to need to say a word based on the category without utilizing a specific forbidden letter. Players all have their own unique individual uh, abilities that they can use once per round, and the round will trigger an ending when every single player except for one has gotten out. And the way you get out is by saying a word with one of the forbidden letters or not saying a word by the time the teapot timer runs out on your turn based on one of the categories. Everybody gets to play a different character once, and then once you do so, that will trigger the end of the game, and you will count the amount of scoring points you get, uh, based on these little uh, teapot counters, uh, based on how you do in each of the single rounds. And whoever has the most points is the winner. You ready for this crazy word game? I'll explain how you set the game up based on the number of players, and then of course we'll talk about how to play and my review. The setup for Alice in Wordland is very simple. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to take all the category cards and shuffle them into a deck and place them onto the table, along with the green, blue, and purple decks as well. You're also going to go ahead and shuffle the red deck and set it aside. The Queen of Hearts is always in the game, and she's always going to be drawing one of them uh, before the rounds start, and they'll, she'll be able to utilize one of those cards. Additionally, based on the number of players, you're going to take the timer cards. You're going to set aside the number of players and remove the rest and place them from the lowest number to the highest number. So if we were playing a four player game, I would take the numbers one, two, three, and four, and I would start with the one side and place it face up on the table. Every player is going to get a character, and every character has a unique and interesting ability that they will be able to use throughout the game. Some characters can't be used based on the number of players you're playing with, and others must be used, like the Queen of Hearts. She's the one that always starts the rounds off. Then you're going to take your little teapot timer, and on the back of it, it will have a second timer. So you can choose to have it go off in 10 seconds or 15 if you want more time, and then whether you want the volume to be lower or to be higher, you can also set that as well. Now, battery is not included in the game, so make sure you get yourself some, I believe, double A's or maybe triple A's for the game. Then you're ready to begin the game. Everybody has their characters, everybody has the letters set aside, as well as everybody has their unique tokens for their characters. Uh, then we will go ahead and begin the round for the game of Alice in Wordland. So I'm going to explain the game with eight players so I can talk about each of the unique abilities that each character has. The first thing you'll do is give a red card to the Queen of Hearts, you'll give a purple card to the White Rabbit, and then you're going to give time tokens out. Tweedledee, or the Tweedle Twins, are going to receive two time counters, and the Mad Hatter will get one. The Caterpillar will get its unique token, and everybody else's abilities are written on the cards here. Start with the first player being the Queen of Hearts, and she's going to draw two cards from the category deck, and then she's going to choose one, putting the other on the bottom of the deck. Once the category has been flipped over, all of the three letter cards, the green, the blue, and the purple ones will flip over. And then your timer is going to begin. You'll push this timer button, and the Queen of Hearts will go ahead and start by saying a word based on the category that does not have any of the forbidden letters in it. So for instance, we have S, J, and W, and you need to say a bird that doesn't have any of those letters in it. So a parrot would work. That is a, a bird that will have none of those letters in it. However, a swallow would not work because a swallow is a bird, but unfortunately has the word S in it. Additionally, you can't use any words like happiness or any types of feelings about birds you may or may not have. It has to be based on the category. An activity, an item, something representing that specific category, basically uh, used for common sense. Once you finish saying one of your words, you'll hit the timer and the next player in turn order will go and they will attempt to guess another word that does not have the forbidden letters in it. And it will continue going that way until a player gets stumped. What basically what happens is the timer runs out, they don't have a word, and they will lose. They'll pop out of the game. The other way it will happen is if they say a word with the letter in it, they're also then going to be removed. When a player gets removed from the game, they're going to take the top card of the time deck. This will represent when they got out and how many points they'll get at the end of the round. The first couple are going to net you no points, so be aware that you do not want to be the first person let out. So for instance, if this Mad Hatter character did not know a word, they would have to draw that card and be removed from the round. And play would keep continuing until there's only one player left. And that would end the round. 
After the round is over, you're going to score points based on the cards here and any of your unique abilities. So if you were the last player in an eight-player game, you're going to get four points. And additionally, certain characters like Alice and the Caterpillar will score, score additional bonus points as well. Uh, then everybody's going to pass their characters to the player on the left and, and or right, it's up to you guys really, and the Queen of Hearts will once again begin the game by drawing two new categories, choosing one of them, and putting the other on the bottom, flipping this one up, these decks will get shuffled and new letters will be dealt out once again, until everybody has been every character, in which case the game will end, you'll count your points up based on how well you did, and the person who has the most points is the winner. Then let's go ahead and talk about the characters really quick here, but that's basically how you play the game. Uh, this character here is able to ignore whenever the Queen of Hearts places out their forbidden extra letter. And um, additionally, they get to uh, make another player take their an extra turn. So they can turn over to the side on their turn and make some, or on somebody else's put turn. So when I finish my turn, maybe Callie is going to be playing as the two of hearts, they can she can turn sideways and make me take an extra turn, basically say another letter or another word. Cheshire Cat can go ahead and skip their turn by turning sideways, and all of these abilities are only done once per game. The White Rabbit is able to flip over a purple card, and for one round, everybody cannot say that specific letter. And it's basically like an extra forbidden word that the White Rabbit doesn't have to deal with. The Queen of Hearts is going to have a red letter word or a letter card and place it up just like the White Rabbit. And if any other of the types of cards are out, they'll just get switched over. So if it's the Queen has her letter out, the White Rabbit can switch with his letter and, and so on and so forth. And the Queen of Hearts is also going to start the round and choose the category. Tweedle Twins are going to be able to reset the timer. So if they're feeling like their timer is running out, they can remove a token and push the timer again and give themselves more time to think of a word. Then you've got the Mad Hatter. The Mad Hatter is able to ignore one of the letter cards for one round by turning sideways and also has a timer token to give themselves more time. The Caterpillar. Caterpillar is able to choose another player, put the token on them, and then score points, uh, their points rounded down in half uh, at the end of the round. So if they think the Tweedle Twins are going to do really well in this category, they'll give their token of that player, and they'll score their points and half rounded down points of the Tweedle Twins. And Alice works the same way as the Caterpillar, but instead of choosing another player, it's all on you. If you do the, uh, the best, you're going to get half your points rounded down in addition to the bonus points you would normally get per round. And that's how you play the game Alice in Wordland. Yeah, I know it's rather simply, 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 simple game, but with some unique twists and turns and some um, callbacks to some old classics like Taboo. So what do I think about the game Alice in Wordland? Well, this is, like I said before, a game that's similar to Taboo-style games or games that involve using words based on categories, uh, celebrity, and all that kind of thing. Uh, but this one here has got the urgency involved with this specific timer. And once you're out of a round, you're out and you have to let everybody else finish. Rounds are very quick though. Uh, you can see we actually had a live stream for this game. It was a ton of fun. If you like word games and you like category games, Alice in Wordland is definitely one I would suggest. I'm a huge Alice in Wonderland game fan, so I'm extremely biased when it comes to this type of a theme. Um, provided the game is done well, and this was done well. So it gets extra bonus points for me because I love the Alice theme. I like word games. I'm terrible at games like this, and I will never ever win this game, but I do not mind playing each and every time because I get to see my favorite characters and I get a chance at getting better uh, with my noggin utilizing words and categories. All the quality components are excellent. It comes with a very nice little insert inside that fits everything you need. The little teapot is high quality as well, and the timer works excellent. Um, the unique powers of each of the characters is really cool. And the fact that you can all, you get to use every single one in the game. I get to use Alice, I'll get to use the Caterpillar, I'll get to use the Two of Hearts, and so on and so forth. I'll get the opportunity to play with everybody's. So it doesn't feel, so feel like I'm playing with just one character, which may or may not be like better than any of the others. In this case, that might be true. In fact, it is true with the Queen of Hearts. Hearts, but everyone gets to play with her once, which is nice. And there are a ton of different category cards. You're going to have a ton of different category cards, and then all, not only that, but different hidden or, or, or forbidden letters. So even if you get the same category more than once, it won't matter because, well, you're going to get different forbidden letters, allowing you to utilize new words that you may not have used last time. 
And that's basically what I've got to say about the game. I, I really, really enjoyed this game. If you like word games, if you like competitive word games, if you like a knockout type games that are quick and on your feet, that make you think, uh, that make you have to utilize not only your brain as far as categories go, but avoiding certain words, then this is one I would strongly suggest you take a look at. If you like the classic style games you've played before, I played with my grandparents and parents back in the day, then this one here is a nice game to introduce to them as well, because it presents them with some unique, unique like player ability powers that you normally wouldn't see in those other type of games. And then of course, it still has that classic feel to it with a nice little additional cute teapot that uh, sold me for the game specifically. But uh, nevertheless, I love this game theme quality. Everything about it is a lot of fun. Uh, I'm just terrible at it. And I think the negatives come in that if you're not good with memory or with categories or thinking on your feet, if you don't like a game that makes you feel rushed or like you know, people are critiquing you, there can be like argumentation in the game because you might say a word that you think is related to the topic, but maybe is not, then it might not be for you. And it depends on how argumentative your group is. And if you like that style of argumentative like play, because this game is going to have that, uh, which is perfectly fine with me. I always don't mind it when everybody on my, my table just goes at it. Oh, that's not a word. Oh, that's not a word. Oh, you said a secret letter three turns ago. It just provides more entertainment for the game itself. But yes, Alice in Wonderland is a solid game. I enjoyed it. You should take a look at it. Link in the description. Thank you guys for watching the Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Alice in Wordland by Draw Lab Entertainment. If you're interested in the game, link down below, like I said. You can also subscribe to the channel, hit the subscribe button, the bell notification button, and also don't forget to check out our website, unfilteredgamer.com. Blog posts, giveaways, Kickstarter lists, and more. We have a game a drop drive giveaway for you up there on the site, and check out their Kickstarter campaign, as well as potentially win another game for yourself for free. And of course, Moonshell is coming on the boats. We'll give you some new updates soon. I hopefully will have an update either today or tomorrow for that as well the kickstarter all right guys thank you so much and as always i look forward to tea time with you next time oh it's not on <laughs>